Welcome back to Sunlit Brushstrokes. My name is Jessica and I am happy to have you joining me today as I clear up some confusion and some issues with the paint recommendations that I've made. Um, I once heard another art teacher say that he felt that student grade supplies were so frustrating to use, only professionals should use them, and that students should use professional quality paint. And that sounds funny, but it's true, and I've come to realize that in a deeper way this last week. I had made a recommendation to use a student grade paint that was higher in student grade, but it was still student grade, and that was the Van Gogh. Well, this week I ran into some troubles and I realized this was maybe not the best paint or as good a paint as I thought that it was. Um, as you know, that's one of the paints, that's the main paint I've been using. Um, even though when I'm doing my personal work, I use M. Graham because it's just, just a beautiful paint to work with. Um, I was finding that it was kind of a high price point for students and when I work with, you know, children or something, I would be using a really cheap student grade paint and that was frustrating to work with and it just seemed like it would be good if there was something maybe a little bit better than than um, the really cheap student grade but something that was maybe not as expensive as M. Graham and when I heard about Van Gogh I was excited because it just felt like a nice in between and it was good for like say teens or intermediate students who weren't quite ready for the price tag of um, M. Graham but they definitely need something better than just the cheapest student grade paint that they could find. So fast forward to doing this YouTube channel, I was recommending either option, use M. Graham if you can afford it, or otherwise Van Gogh was an affordable option I thought was really good. Well, this week I was painting, and as you know, for all the projects I've been doing, I've been using um, Van Gogh because it's like, I just thought, well, why not? It's, it's better price range and more people can afford it. So let's go with that. And um, then I've run into troubles and I feel really bad because I've recommended this paint and kind of thought it was, it was a good paint from what I had experienced so far, but I did a more complicated piece this week and it was, I was using a new palette and there was a number of factors that came into play and it was like, oh, there's something wrong here. So I'm going to share my journey with you of what happened this week and to give you some recommendations. If you've already gone ahead and purchased Van Gogh, I am super sorry. Um, it's not the worst paint in the world. I will give you the run through of the good, the bad, the ugly and what you can use Van Gogh for and when I would say you should go and buy a better paint like um, M. Graham. First of all, let's talk about the good. Um, Van Gogh paint is definitely a better paint for a student grade paint, I will say. Um, it's definitely not the worst paint I've worked with. However, I, I'm, I'm going to explain, it's got some issues. Um, I had done these swatches, as you know, if you watched my color theory lesson or no, this one was in the, I did these swatches in one of my first videos when I talked about transferring and supplies and this was the Van Gogh and this one was M. Graham and I was kind of comparing and saying, you know, these weren't too bad. They were both transparent or they seemed that way. <laughs> as, you, as you probably, if you've been watching the channel at all, you know, I created this using Van Gogh and it worked fairly well. Then I went ahead and, oops, I'm going to drop it, of course, did our color wheel and we got some pretty good vibrant colors. It's definitely the, the pigments that are within those paints are good pigments. They're the same pigments that would be in an artist quality paint. The problem is there's also something else. And finally, the project that I am doing in the middle, I'm almost finished, is this one. It's a little more complex. There's more layers. There's a lot of detail. Um, and I ran into a few little things and I thought, hmm, and then they weren't so little. I'll, I'll explain. So as you can see, you can still use Van Gogh and get reasonable results. And I'm going to continue using Van Gogh for a little longer on this channel. I'll give the first recommendation as M. Graham, um, but I will continue using the Van Gogh brand because I think if anyone's already gone and purchased it, I want to show you, you can still use it. And I want to stay in the trenches with you. And if we run into things, we'll run into them together. So I'm going to keep using that brand for a little longer, even though I'll recommend M. Graham. And that's like I say, M. Graham is the one that I do use personally. Just thought I was going to come up with a little bit cheaper option. So now for the bad. Um, as I was doing the last project, I did find I was, I was having to really push to get my darks dark enough at times. 
um, when I was working on the rose buds, let's grab that painting. They are almost very slightly, you might not be able to tell in the camera, but they're almost slightly pastel looking. Um, I was having a little bit of trouble getting those buds, just there was something going on when I was working on them. And it's funny, but when I'm editing the video uh, footage for that project, as I'm mixing the red paint, I'm going, there's something, you know, it's settling, the paint is settling. Well, now I know it was a combination of maybe the pigment settling, but there was definitely some binders settling and binders creating, or the fillers creating some different texture or not even texture, but just a different kind of thickness. And I was needing to stir it and just feeling like this is a little bit different. Um, and so there was, there was already some, some things that along the way I've kind of gone, okay, well, this is, this isn't M Graham, but it's not so bad. The other thing is that it was not as intense. Like there's been times I felt like I had to layer on a bit more, which is understandable. I thought, okay, well, it's not as densely pigmented as a high quality paint would be, but you just add more of it, right? Well, then the ugly comes in and this is what happened. So the other night I was working on my project and I left it to let one part of the painting dry and come back and work on the rest, you know, maybe half an hour later. I come back and some of the paints in the palette were starting to dry and they were starting to peel. Not only were they starting to peel, but where they were peeling, the underside of them was actually kind of white. And that part was puzzling. So this is what happened. I was working on this and I left the, the leaves to dry and I came back down to, to my final stage of this painting and mix up more colors, do the background. When I came down, one of the paints was doing this and I'm like, what in the world is that? You can see it's dried out because like I say, I had left my palette alone and it was like peeling and the underside of the peeled paint, whoa, just ended up flying, was white. And you can see the same thing happening in the green. It's starting to peel. I've just got a dry paintbrush right now to show you that. It's peeling and the underside is white. And the part that bothered me was not the peeling, it was the underside of the paint being white. Um, that's not supposed to be, oh, and look at that, whoa. It's even peeling on the blue. And again, let's just take a look at that with the craft knife, see if I can lift it off. Yeah, it's just kind of flying on me. Okay, there we go. The underside of that paint is white. Now, that does not make for good watercolor. And that explains why I was having some of the trouble that I was having. At first I thought, okay, what's going on? Is this the paint or could it be the palette? I just got this palette as a gift from a friend and I thought, I don't know, could the palette be doing this? That seems really strange. And, um, and then I thought, well, or could it be the brush? Like maybe my paintbrush wasn't clean because I had done some fooling around with some of my brushes one day mixing other paints. And I thought, okay, did I not wash the brush well? And so, is there like contamination of paint on the brush or where where is this like white coming from? I went and grabbed my permanent black marker, a Sharpie, and I started to do my black line test. So I made some black lines of um, ink on these papers and I'm going, okay, that like you can see, yes, this is not gorgeous art. <laughs> I was, this is me when it's late at night and I am freaked out because my paint is, um, no longer transparent, you can see very clearly that those black lines that I have done on this page are getting very um, covered by the paint. And yet when I did a test of the quinacridone rose straight out of the tube, it seemed fairly transparent. And you know that when I did this test with the, um, the three primaries that I showed you, I think I showed you this paper on one of our other videos, it looks pretty transparent. So then I brought in another palette, this large one here, and started to test things out. So I made a mixture of the quinacridone rose and the um, transparent yellow medium. I'm just gonna zoom in there so that you can see. Um, and I mixed it up and it, I could almost see there was white forming on the bottom, but I let it dry. And again, you can see these little pieces, it started to um, lift again. And those little pieces are most definitely not transparent. They are an opaque white. And so then it was like, okay, well, I guess it's the paint. Um, and it's the paint. 
It does have filler or binder that is heavier than the pigments or just a different, just makes it a slightly different consistency. And the reason maybe why I hadn't figured it out before is when I was using the, the um, large flat palette, all my mixtures were kind of just like, it, the binder would have been spread evenly among the pigments, if that makes sense. And so the same amount of binder and pigment were kind of going on at the same time. And um, and then with with the, let's grab this one. This one, it's got less intense darks. Like the, the darks that are on there are obviously made of phthalo blue and quinacridone rose together. So maybe the phthalo blue helped mask some of the problem. I mean, the phthalo blue still has the binder in it, but, or filler or whatever it is. Um, but I didn't, I wasn't, I was noticing, yes, that it wasn't as highly pigmented as M. Graham, but I was not cluing into the fact there was like a white filler in it. Cause that's a big no, no with watercolor. You do not want white filler in your paint. Um, and why I hadn't figured that out sooner. Um, I'm thinking maybe partly cause when I was teaching students, um, I was using like plastic palettes and maybe the projects were faster, faster paced. What seemed to maybe bring out the problem was the fact I was working with like quite a pile, if you will, or a, a decent puddle of um, a mixture in the palette and it was a well palette. So it was kind of, you know, holding a lot more paint than just being spread out across a flat surface. And the at the beginning, it felt like, okay, maybe I have to keep storing this, keep, you know, getting enough color, which is kind of different for the mixture I had. It just something felt it felt different on the brush is maybe the only way I can say it just felt like I had to mix it it's hard to explain the feel but it just felt different than working with professional paint and um as I came to the bottom like it, obviously I was lifting I was removing more and more of the pigment as I was painting and so by the time I got to like the bottom of the the well if you will or kind of the last I don't know if you want to say third or how much paint was there that's where I started to really notice the buildup of like white when I returned to it and came back and I went well, what's wrong and then like I say I mixed it and tested it on those black lines and it was most definitely no longer transparent it was almost pastel some of the mixtures I was getting which shocked me you can actually see one of the pinks I was getting right there now that color that looks like a pastel and that looks like there's white paint in there and that's not supposed to look like that so I felt so bad for anyone who maybe ordered off Amazon or went and purchased this locally because um, I know what it's like. I just had gone out and bought more of it myself um, and I am sorry. I will tell you a few things you can keep in mind and still use it. So one, like I said, we're going to keep doing it together. I'm going to stay in the trenches with you. We're going to use it for some more projects, at least like, as I said, this one, I carry it, carrying it right through to completion using Van Gogh. Um, and I will probably keep using Van Gogh for a little bit more just so that you guys kind of, if you've already purchased it, you can keep using it. If you haven't purchased it, you can, I'll only recommend M. Graham as being the best. And then if you, you know, like I say, if you're, you're tight on finances, Van Gogh's not the worst student grade paint in the world. It's not, it's just not ne nearly as good as I thought it was. <laughs> what I would say it's still good for is lighter washes. Um, like when I was doing that tulip, let's show it up again here. You can see the, the washes on there are fairly light and they, I felt like they still work really, really well. Um, and this one, I mean, it's got some light washes as well and they're, I think they're gorgeous with the, the Van Gogh paint. Um, it was, like I said, it, you know, the deeper washes were a little more of a challenge, but more than that, it was really what I found when I got to the bottom of my palette and started to go, okay, this is pastel. And the thing especially actually is that bud, that tiny bud. I really feel like it's looking kind of pastel. Um, and like I say, pastel paint. No, no, usually in watercolor, when we want to make a color lighter, we just add more water. Other mediums like acrylics or oils, you do use white to lighten your color, but, um, most, well, I mean, some artists do like whites in their watercolor a lot. Most, I think, don't. Um, it's just the beauty of watercolor is the water, right? And the water creates a transparency and the, the glow of the paper, the white of the paper kind of glows through those pigments. And that's what sets watercolor apart from other mediums. And that's, that's what I like watercolor for is its transparency. Um, definitely, um, no matter what you do, use a good quality paper. That is going to help. Um, so that would be one thing. So like I say, we'll work through this together. Um, 
use it for lighter washes if you find you can do most of your painting with it and then have to transfer to um, another paint like a quality artist paint for the last step when you're working on the darker like deepest darks you could always do that or some some projects just tend to be more light light washes and doing loose I, I like doing loose fully watercolor sometimes and I think that Van Gogh would still be pretty good for that um uh, another thing is to be aware of like you if you're using a flat palette maybe there's a chance that it would just kind of keep that filler and, and binder and pigment dispersed better maybe um, or if you're using a well palette, just be aware as you work your way through, maybe consider that as you get lower to the bottom of the well, it's going to become more opaque or more white. So those, that's, those are my recommendations for if you are using it or you've already purchased it. And like I say, I am sorry for recommending it. I did not realize what I was recommending and um, I honestly was excited about the paint um, and was using it um, until now and I'll keep using it. But now I have an awareness that it's definitely got a lack of transparency there. So thank you so much for hanging out with me during this short spiel today. Um, I'm looking forward to putting out some videos, doing that rose together. It's, it's a really detailed project, but if you like a challenge, I think you're going to enjoy it. So I hope that this has left you with a little bit of peace that it's not all is lost the paint is still usable and just be aware of its limitations for sure and i hope this has inspired you to just keep learning and growing we're all in this together for sure and um, enjoy the journey see you soon bye